BPREP stands for Breast Cancer Personalized Risk Assessment Education and Prevention. And that really means it's a three-tiered approach. We want to provide the highest level of clinical support and services for women who either know they're at risk or women who want to come to learn about their risk. We want to provide education around risk-reducing options, not only for the women but for their providers, as well as for the trainees that come through the halls of Brigham Women's Hospital. The BPREP program will be housed within the Comprehensive Breast Health Center at Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is a perfect place to uh, develop this program because it already sees a very rich population of women each year who come in with nonspecific breast complaints. At least 3,000 women a year are cared for right now through the Comprehensive Breast Health Center. But in 2017, we aim to go one step further and to provide each of those 3,000 women with a comprehensive risk assessment a, a thorough conversation discussing what their risk for breast cancer is and counseling and strategies to reduce that risk. Understanding breast cancer risk and counseling women about breast cancer risk is in fact sometimes harder than talking to women about breast cancer itself. When a woman has breast cancer, the options are clearly laid out. We have lots of evidence to help us drive our decision making and lots of information to help women understand what choices that they may make and what their risk of breast cancer recurrence is, for example. But when it comes to talking about breast cancer risk and breast cancer risk reduction, the evidence is less clear. There's very limited information on how to counsel women regarding what screening they should be having and regarding what options there are for prevention and how those options may interact with a woman with an individual patient's level of risk. So providing education not only to women providers as well as our trainees will be a critical component of the BPREP program. The risk factors are likely different for the different types of breast cancer that we see now and we understand that breast cancer is not just one disease but a family of diseases. For example, up until just a few years ago we only thought that there were two genes or we only knew about two genes that were associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Those genes were BRCA1 and BRCA2. These are normal genes, we all have them, but families that inherit a mutation in one of these two genes are at substantially increased risk of developing breast cancer. Women with a mutation in BRCA1 or BRCA2 have a lifetime risk of 50 to 80 percent, which means that literally one out of every two women with, one, with a mutation in one of these genes will develop breast cancer. When women are at that level of risk, they often will choose surgical strategies. Those mutations in those genes also put women at increased risk of ovarian cancer, and many of those women will be recommended to have their ovaries removed to reduce their risk of getting ovarian cancer. More recently, we've now discovered that there are actually many more genes that are associated with an increased risk of breast cancer, and so it's getting a little harder to figure out exactly what that risk is and who should be considering risk-reducing options and, and who should not. But aside from the genetic uh, mutations or the inherited predisposition, predisposition to breast cancer, there are many other risk factors that put women in what we consider more of a moderate risk level. So I said that inherited mutation puts women in the 50 to 80 percent lifetime risk. And we have normal population risk, which is down around 10 to 12 percent. But there are many other risk factors that com combined put women in this middle range, which is really about the 20 to 40 percent risk range. The factors that put women there can be a combination of things such as lifestyle choices, women can have breast biopsies that show abnormal cells, um, and just having dense breasts can increase a woman's risk of getting breast cancer. With our research efforts, we'll not only be looking at our clinical strategies, our screening strategies, but we'll also be offering women the opportunity to contribute their own data and even their own DNA to our research efforts. We'd like to collect uh, germline DNA, the so-called DNA that we inherit from our parents to try to understand inherited risk better. At the same time, within the BPREP program, we'll be able to offer patients the opportunity to participate in trials aimed towards breast cancer prevention, not only established remedies, but also novel remedies. And so within the BPREP program, we'll also be studying novel interventions, lifestyle interventions. Can we reduce the risk of breast cancer with exercise? Can we make dietary changes? Can we help women lose weight? Can we help them understand, again, how their lifestyle choices might affect their risk of getting breast cancer?
the work that we'll be doing in the B prep program will help get us one step closer towards having those answers. Right now, I'll be able to tell my patients if they're worried about their sister or they're worried about their daughter, that they can send them to the B prep program. And together, we'll work towards un better understanding breast cancer risk and identifying better options for prevention.